Hi everyone, I'm Angie Kellen and this is Shot Talk with Aki Fujimura. Aki is the CEO of D2S and D2S is the managing company sponsor of the EBIM initiative. Hello Aki. Hi Angie. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thank you. Well, as you know, uh, this edition is going to be focusing on more of a recap of the SPIE Advanced Lithography Conference that was held at the end of February in San Jose, California. So Aki, let's start off with EUV. Now, EUV is a reality and it's in production in some of the fabs. Um, what new challenges and opportunities are you seeing? Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, there was a big celebratory mode um, with EUV going into high volume manufacturing, both at TSMC and Samsung. Uh, both companies uh, brought up uh, actual devices, electronic devices that have uh, EUV built uh, chips in it. So, so that was a uh, a big accomplishment that started, what, 30, 40 years ago. So, <laughs> you know, <Wow>. a long, <laughs> long effort. And congratulations to everybody uh, uh, who started it um, and uh, had continued to be involved in it. Um, yeah, so uh, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, uh, downstream impact now, now that it's really being used. Um, uh, there are many things that are maybe uh, just getting by today, but and uh, need to ramp up uh, quickly. Um, actinic inspection had always been discussed as uh, one of those things, and uh, 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 LaserTech has announced the machine last year, and uh, it seems to be going well. Uh, pedicles is another issue um, that comes into play, and they're actually interrelated, but uh, um, I don't know uh, uh, how much progress there's been on the pedicle side, especially as uh, 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 you know, more and more demands are put on pedicle. And the EUV is a reflective mask, so um, um, uh, EUV energy needs to go through the pedicle twice. So uh, an amount of loss in energy that you experience in one direction, you have another one coming back. So uh, maybe 60% of the energy uh, 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 you know, ends up going through the pedicle. Um, pedicle has to last and you have to not break. And, and uh, the, the, the there are a lot of difficulties, but that, you know, uh, the industry is making a lot of progress in that, and obviously it's not needed uh, to go into high volume manufacturing. There are ways to get around it, apparently. Um, and then uh, uh, there are many, many downstream effects, like, for example, um, at uh, D2S, we uh, announced an extension of our wafer plane analysis capability that is on uh, advanced uh, uh, CD sub machine, uh, a CD sub machine for mask, and uh, being able to do a uh, wafer plane analysis from a mask picture that you take, and the extension is for uh, EUV capability that includes uh, mask 3D. Mask 3D effects are much more important uh, for EUV. It's important for 193i too, but uh, it's much more important for EUV. So, um, so we have that capability. Uh, there are many other companies uh, announcing similar uh, for EUV extensions, so um, I think we'll see more and more of that, uh, you know, down the line. Well, congratulations! Announced at SBIE was the fact that Micron had joined the EBM oh, initiative, yeah. so that's wonderful. And also during the EBM initiative's luncheon, they had given a presentation on curvilinear mass, and uh, of course, we'll have that video for you later as well. But uh, can you give us some of the key talking points or the key points from that talk? Yeah, so uh, 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 Dr. Russell uh, came from Micron to present uh, at our EB Initiative event. Uh, 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 thank you so much for Micron joining the EB Initiative as well. Um, uh, it's a real honor. Um, what uh, uh, Dr. Russell talked about was uh, tremendously interesting. Um, not only did he talk about the true mask IoT results that uh, he was uh, able to achieve for uh, creating uh, a true mask IoT designs, curvilinear masks uh, in one day. Um, he talked about how Micron had been, uh, even prior uh, to the use of true mask IoT, uh, using curvilinear or all angle uh, shapes uh, to improve process windows. So uh, he made some uh, specific uh, uh, references to uh, uh, the design styles where uh, the original Manhattan design is converted 
to a uh, curvilinear shape so that the process window in manufacturing is improved uh, between 60 to 80 percent depending on which result. Um, 60 to 80 percent improvement in process window is a tremendous uh, improvement. It's, it's very difficult to get that. So um, uh, clearly his message was that uh, if you design uh, to a shape that is more manufacturable, the uh, of course the actual result in manufacturing is more resilient to manufacturing variation. And uh, having specific uh, uh, actual results uh, that show that was, uh, uh, I, I thought was very important for the industry as a whole. Well, also at the eBeam Initiative Luncheon, Micronic had given a presentation about their path to deep learning through CDLE. And for those of you that don't know, the CDLE is a Center for Deep Learning in Electronics Manufacturing. And um, so maybe you could also at the same time, we also have a video of that as well. So you will be able to see that later. Um, so Aki, tell me, what, um, what is new with the CDLE? You know, what, what kind of deep learning is going on there? And uh, maybe you can give us an update. Yeah, uh, uh, we had a tremendous success with CDLE uh, over the last year and a half. And uh, we formed it uh, together with New Flare and Micronic. Um, uh, in uh, September, I guess, of uh, 2018. Uh, so it's only been like 17 months since then, but uh, uh, we had over uh, 10 successful projects, um, and uh, 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 over three of those uh, projects are uh, in the process of being productized uh, right now by various companies. Um, and uh, Micronic uh, specifically uh, at the meeting talked about their a result of taking the, uh, uh, they make uh, uh, a flat panel display, uh, laser-based uh, multi-beam mask writer, and uh, they, they're, they're taking the log files from those machines and getting a deep learning-based correlation to MURA, which is an important uh, anomaly-based effect that human eye can see uh, when you're uh, producing flat panel displays. And, and if you have it in a mask, it appears on every uh, uh, flat panel display that the mask produces. So it's a very important thing for uh, the flat panel displays to be able to detect automatically MURA and to be able to uh, make that correlation from the log files of the machine. That, that, that's that's pretty outstanding and uh, 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 they uh, shared that result. So that's one of the more than 10 uh, successful projects that we've had. And I, I think uh, it's been tremendously successful on, uh, uh, in reflecting on it. And uh, my personal take on it is uh, immersion, not the 193i kind of immersion, but the language acquisition kind of uh, immersion in uh, uh, these uh, people at the center of deep learning uh, working only on deep learning projects and working only around people, all of whom only work on deep learning projects, right? And you know, when I came over uh, to the United States when I was 13 years old, I came without my family by myself and, and I went into an American family. So for nine months, I didn't speak any Japanese, I didn't hear any Japanese, I only uh, was in an immersive environment in English and that helped me tremendously um, to forget the whole language and acquire a new language. And I think it's the same thing uh, with deep learning too. Uh, uh, engineers do much better, much faster and uh, much more focus uh, and uh, uh, they can learn a lot um, of deep learning in a short period of time and, and get these kinds of uh, accomplishments. So I think that's really great. And, uh, yeah, there are you know, many other benefits uh, of the Deep Learning Center, but uh, that's the one that stands out to me. Yeah. Well, let me wrap up with my final question. And Aki, you always have your ear to the ground when you're at these conferences. What are you hearing from the attendees as far as a particular paper or any kind of news that was shared? Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, walking around the conference, uh, we couldn't uh, uh, help but to notice that uh, some uh, countries, some companies were uh, missing in attendance because of the COVID-19 effect. Uh, so uh, the, uh, hopefully uh, this kind of uh, 
uh, a video can be helpful to uh, those people who couldn't attend. Um, but uh, the conference was uh, very successful. Um, you know, you, you might think, uh, uh, you know, like if you get on the plane right now, um, it's kind of empty in the back. But uh, this conference was very successful. It was not empty. And, uh, it was well attended. And, and because of EUV, uh, there was a lot of uh, celebration uh, kind of a mood uh, to it. So, so it was fun um, to be there. And also, um, partially because of EUV, but um, uh, a lot because of uh, really deep learning and uh, the effect that deep learning is having on the computing community. Um, there is no talk of uh, Moore's law stopping anytime in the next 10 years. And everybody is very confidently talking about how to get to the, the two nanometer node. And you know, people are seven now working on five. Uh, they're thinking about three, and and two is the one after that. So it's many years from now. So uh, Moore's law conti continues at least for the leading edge. Um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, there were a lot of talks about DTCO, design technological optimization. Uh, there were a lot of discussions about the device level improvement uh, 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 going to nano sheets. And uh, that was a lot of discussion there and on the flash devices on uh, going 3d uh, uh, some people talked about 192 layers on um, you know 64 times 3 um, uh, 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 of uh, you know many many stacks right there a high-rise uh, building <laughs> um, in uh, in a semiconductor device and so uh, uh, it's a very exciting lot of discussions uh, deep learning got a lot of uh, uh, papers too um, uh, as in the past, um, uh, they are cast as uh, machine learning uh, discussion and deep learning as subset of machine learning. But in the past, um, uh, in uh, when somebody said machine learning, um, uh, half of it was machine learning without deep learning, and half of it was deep learning. Right? Um, uh, this conference, my feeling was uh, uh, a majority of the machine learning papers were actually about the deep learning segment um, mm -hmm. of uh, machine learning. So um, I, I think deep learning is uh, uh, more and more taking hold and uh, more companies and more people are uh, trying it and finding success with it, just as we are. Well, fantastic. Well, Aki, thank you again for always coming by and, and sharing your insights. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Angie. And we, I would encourage all of you to check out the Tech Talk and Perspective segments of this edition of the Fine Line Video Journal. They cover the EBIM Initiative luncheon presentations. And I want to thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you next time.